Hi, I'm Shane Siddle. I'm from Comex, and I'm here today to talk to Lee Chalker about his um, Battle for Bustle covers. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, so the first piece we've got here is uh, the cover of issue one of uh, Battle for Bustle. Have I pronounced that right? Is I always worry yes. that I'm pronouncing it wrong. Battle um, for Bustle, yeah. Yep. Um, so what is it about this piece that you like, the cover? Have you got them in front of you at all? No, I don't, but I know them. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, mate, that first issue many years ago, I did a pencil and inked version. Uh, Christopher <laughs> was not ever meant to be someone that uh, was all there. So I was sort of a little bit extreme back in the early days when I first started drawing it and had a moment where it was almost like he split into two personalities, you know, like the old Christopher and the new Christopher. And that image always resonated with me, even though I've done a few hundred drawings since then and stuff. Uh, and basically uh, I decided, you know, I had to come up with the first issue cover and it had always stuck with me. And I thought to myself, like, you know what, I'm rolling with that. I'm doing this stuff. I'm, I'm, this is what it, it was an instinctive thing. Uh, you know, you can dilly dabble around with lots of drawings and sketches and ideas and that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, man, like I, I, I've found so far in this whole um, thing that uh, whatever the feeling what, that I had 20 years ago, seems to still be the same feeling i've got now so cool. i decided to add some of my drawing uh like you know a little touch here and there to it but then i thought you know what because i like painting i love painting mm -hmm. really love painting and i thought i'm going to have a crack at this uh in a, you know acrylic and with that's <laughs> Don't mind me, I've got an entourage here. There's a small blonde Kelpie called Lloyd and, uh, you know, a staffy called Izzy here as well, okay? They're always in this room with me. All good. Um, and I just decided to, I just decided to, you know, attack it with acrylic and it came up and I thought, like, no, this is it. This is it. If I have to get this first issue out, this is what I want and this is it came up like I wanted it and, uh, you know, mate, it's out there. There's no turning back now. So, like, I'm very proud of the image. I think it's distinctive for me as a person as well as, as my artwork. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's very nice. I like it. It's what attracted me to the uh, to the comic in the first place. It's yeah, nice. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. Because a few people have said... Um, that to me that have bought it from uh the comic book factory uh that it you know you walk into a comic book shop and you see like thousands of comic books on a wall and realistically uh i mean this is just me i'm talking about it's, i'm yeah. not talking for any other individual opinions are like bums mate everyone's got one and you know like so i'm not a bag out anyone's artwork but my love and thought process was you know what what if someone went and stuck up the brightest colored comic book they possibly could on the wall of the comic book shop you know and i was almost i contemplated doing a fluorescent <laughs> comic book which is battle for bustle on it just so to catch people's eye so that's essentially where you know like idea came from as well mate um uh because the sad part is it's not just about artwork sometimes you've got to think about you know the best way you can control your marketing and and that as well as your own product if you know what i mean because believe me before four or four, foremost i'm an artist and i love it i love comic books um but you do have to give those secondary thoughts to you know what may just catch someone's eye and it's a tricky market mate you know 
yeah, that it is. from what you're trying to do. Sometimes you just have to uh, have a, just have a bloody red hot crack at things, man, you know? Yep. I don't think that ever stopped anyone. And if they call you a fool in the end of the day, mate, then so be it. But you know what? If you've had a good go and when we all end up in that six-foot pine box, we're going to look back and go, we had a shot. <laughs> true, true, true. Um, so is there anything that, say, inspired this look, this um, this particular style, or was it just something you did years ago and you worked on it and worked on it? And... The original sketches mm -hmm. were done in 1996 1997 uh wow. just for the characters just just ideas mate you know um and uh look uh, honestly my dad passed away in 1998 and he was a huge influence on me and at that particular point uh in time i guess i was looking to uh you know, give, find some meaning in these things. So self-reflection, uh, understanding, and it started off as a small comic. The, the The original comic was called Drive, and it was a drive to keep going, but it was also about a man that uh, drove around the city where he'd grown up, um, going to those familiar places that he'd been to with his, uh, his dad <laughs> slash my dad. Um, and I got to about 24, 25 splash pages and stuff. And I had all these ideas in my head. And at the same time, I was, oh man, madly, almost religiously into like Dune, uh, big novels world creators and stuff you know yep and and just over time man uh i guess and probably the mate if you asked me to take this project on now at 43 i'd tell you hell no but you know like when you're like a young fella and you're going through stuff and you know everyone goes through stuff yep it just it, it's evolved into this and uh um mate it's there's look i'll be honest with you and i've i've had this discussion with you and i've had this discussion with other people it's a self-autobiographical book set in the science fiction world uh based on loss love happiness hope yeah freedom you know all of those things and i guess uh i can't really put it in any other way than what i'm familiar with so zero nine one one seven seven is actually me and uh there you go there's a big reveal no one's listening <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I hope that answered the question. Roundabout. Yeah, it did. Yeah, roundabout. <laughs> um, well, the next question is actually about were there, were there any challenges with this particular piece, with the actual artwork itself? Did it just flow? Were there, were there challenges of any sorts? Did you have to learn something new? Well, the original piece was done... Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but my recollections of it are being done in about 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. um, and there were challenges. I always loved the drawing, to be honest with you. It was one of those things that just, you know, I was trying to do like big biceps, big, you know, you know, that sort of job, you know. Which, hey, if you like it, that's cool. But, you know, my mind was going in a different direction you know and i had those moments where i was just man it's, it's you know boom you just feel sometimes like you're not gonna get through it and uh when i had the opportunity 
to do the cover of issue one. Mm -hmm. It was always the drawing I was going back to. I had been painting instead of drawing for about two years. Uh, yep. Painting, uh, oh, mate, just painting. I loved it, man, painting. And then I just had the opportunity to do it. And Gary Della from uh, my publisher, you know, reverendpublications.com.au, yep. excellent dude, said you need to do a cover. And it was always the one I came back to. So I threw the acrylic paint at it. I was happy with it. And it is where it lays. Nice. Well, I'm a fan, as I said earlier. So, yeah. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate that. Not a problem. Um, so is there anything, like, intentional in the art to... Or, uh, connect with your fans or would be fans or is it just like you mentioned before the colors to make it stand out on the the rack i would say there would not be a single person anywhere we've all traveled long lives mate short lives you know things go in a journey but there would not be a single moment in anyone's life, whether it be past, future, present, that you have not felt that urge to scream, mate. Yeah. And Christopher has that urge in the first issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may come once or twice, three times in your life. Hopefully it never comes at all. But that would be what I would try to portray. I would like to just give people food for thought, man. Nice. Well, I can see that. I can. S now that you've said it, it stands out even more than it did before. Um, so, yeah, very nice. Well, thanks, Lee. Uh, it was great to talk to you. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts on your artwork. Uh, it was uh, quite enlightening. So, um, yeah, so that'll be us for the day. See you later. See you, mate. Take care. I hope you're well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. If you want to get a hold of Lee's work, uh, just go over to battleforbustle.com and you'll find his comics and um, some merchandise, I think, is available over there as well. Um, if you want to get a hold of his work on the calendar, you'll need to go to comex.link and uh, register your interest at the pre-launch page and you'll be notified by email of when the Kickstarter starts. So um, thanks for your support and have a good day.